Thank you for joining us on our journey here to preserve the history of mixed martial arts. When I wanted to take on this project, I needed help. I brought in one of my favorite matchmakers, Miguel Iterate, and the MMA detective, Mike Davis. So to do this, we've been able to preserve history. Welcome and enjoy. Welcome back to the Lights Out Podcast. I am the MMA detective, Mike Davis, along with me, as always, Miguel Iterate. Miguel, we've got a very special guest today, Ed Tyson. Ed, what MMA memorabilia are we presenting today? I have the uh, check from Steve Jenham's win at UFC 3. He came in as an alternate and uh, beat Harold Howard uh, for the uh, victory that night. All right. There's a lot going on with this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be like one of those football plays where you've got like a bunch of circles and squares that are drawing all over. Let me try attempt to break this down. Harold Howard wins his first fight. Hoist Gracie, well, first and foremost, it's the first time a tournament's ever been won by somebody without the last name Gracie, so it's completely unexpected. So Hoist Gracie fights Kimo Leopoldo. Kim, he beats Kimo, but endures so much damage that he cannot continue in the tournament. We have a clip of Chris Brendan breaking down what took place and how Kimo was able to kind of defeat a lot of the early jiu-jitsu moves. Super interesting, involving Hicks and Gracie. That's on another clip on his channel. But Harold Howard advances to the finals. Ken Shamrock's in the, in the locker room, and Scott Bissack in his interview with us said, Ken absolutely could continue, but refused to do so due to the fact that it wasn't Hoist. For him, it was ego. It was Hoist or nobody. So he refused to continue. Bob Shamrock, our Davey told us in our interview with him, that for months, Bob refused to talk to Ken because he was so upset about Ken not advancing to the finals and you know getting his hand raised. So in essence, Steve Jenham, who's an alternate at this time, who had not fought, he had not fought the whole night. Usually like the alternates had one fight to kind of, like, uh, to keep their place. He did not in this tournament. So his first fight is in the finals against Harold Howard. Harold Howard, I, I, he, this is the event where he comes with a spinning or a, a, a somersault ax kick and, and then like follows up with a right hand. It's actually, Jenham, Jenham's got a good chin because it would have knocked a few people out. Miguel, what do you recall about this event? Well, we're in ancient history here. It's UFC 3, yeah. you know. And at this point, everything's a learning lesson. And, and here, historically, Jenham's position is sealed. And he was the first lesson of, you know, that the tournaments may not go your way. You know, like you mentioned, it's the first time Hoist didn't win a tournament. So... You know, you had to count Hoyce as the favorite. You know, when Art Davey and Bob Meyerowitz sat down to talk about this, you know, that, you know, if Hoyce doesn't win, maybe Ken will win or maybe Kimo will win and they'll have a new star. Or, you know, they certainly weren't expecting to sign that check over to the alternate, uh, you know. And, uh, you know, Jenna would come back and and, and uh, do, do it justice, but he would ride off into the sunset and, uh, you know, have a police career, I think, after this. So, uh, Jenham's going to be uh, a guy that is remembered as that, the guy that taught us the tournament lesson, that the tournament isn't viable. You can't count on it every single show. Right. So, Ed, how do you come about this, this piece? Well, a friend of mine out in California actually obtained it directly from Steve Jenham. Guy was an old collector, friend of mine, former collector by the name of Jeremy Kubal. He actually just called Steve Jenham. And apparently Jenham had the check hanging in his basement uh, on the wall with tape, because I can see the tape marks on the back of the check. But he ended up uh, just sending it to Jeremy. He didn't even, like, make him pay for it. He just, Jeremy was a very aggressive collector, ambitious, and found a way to just get guys to either send them or sell them. And that was uh, how he obtained that. So I, I, I made a big purchase, and that was part of it, and, it's one of the night. It's one of the coolest pieces in my collection, dating back to UFC three. And it's got Art Davies' signature on it too, correct? It does. Yes. Okay, so here's like the controversy behind UFC three. The controversy is, whenever a fighter enters the ring, their name's announced, the bell is rang, 
The bout has officially started. Whatever takes place after that is going to be used as like and the fighter databases as what took place. And it also includes what the fighters get paid. Hoist Gracie didn't want to continue after his first round with chemo, but wanted the money to that the second round advancing into the second round would garner. He goes, enters the cage. They go through all of the entrance and then his corner throws in the towel. So it gives him the second round money fees. But if you look at Harold Howard's record, it, it's listed as a no contest with Harold Howard advancing. That's a win for Harold Howard. Fastest Gracie finish too, I might add. <laughs> but it, it's, there's, so there's a little bit of controversy there. Again, I mean, obviously we're talking about the early days of record keeping, but Harold Howard is absolutely being gypped a win against, obviously, the founding father of mixed martial arts, as we know it today, and that's why he's crazy. So it's, it's a very, very interesting piece with like a lot of stories and drama um, surrounding it. This, is it in a frame now, or is it still as is? How, how large is this check? The check is probably about four feet wide by 20 inch, or four feet long by 20 inches wide. I actually keep it in between cardboard just to protect it. I don't put it in plastic or a frame because I'm afraid with the ink because it's kind of written out in ink that if it got hot, it could possibly stick the front eventually to the plastic of a fr- you know, the frame itself or the window or the glass. And I just kind of keep it in a cool environment because I've known other people that have had similar checks and they don't look as nice as this one. This one looks... Like it was just written out yesterday. So I, I think what I've been doing has really been uh, able to preserve it the correct way. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Ed, thank you so much. This is like a, an incredible piece of MMA memorabilia. And that's kind of what this show is all about. There's, there's, there's so much history behind just a piece of paper that um, you know, would surprise most people. So Ed, thank you so much for joining us. And ladies and gentlemen, thank we'll you. Back cool. over- We will be back next week with another episode. Check out the full interview on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms.